Hi guys. Um, so something about me that's really annoying to me and other people is that when I see something becoming trendy, I immediately start to hate it. So I hate that and I'm going to paint over it. Okay. So little tip, uh, there's a few holes on this wall from like where I had a shelf hanging and some pictures. So I took the nails and the screws out. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is indent around the nail hole a little bit with a hammer. It works best with a ball peen hammer, but I couldn't find one. So I just used this, I've already done it. Um, and then you use the scraper and this stuff. And you just kind of scrape it on and then you just sand it after it dries. And it's supposed, supposed to dry after like 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and patch. Okay guys, we are on day two of mural project. Um, and I realized I skipped a step last night on telling you guys how I drew it on the wall. Um, so, 
I put a grid on a piece of paper and then kind of drew what I wanted. Um, and at that point, I lost patience and decided to go ahead and put it on the wall. Um, I have a hard time visualizing things unless they're full scale. So that's why I just drew the basics on my paper um, and then started the details on the wall. Which, you know, if you don't think that way, then don't do it that way. Put it all on paper first. So a lot of people ask me how I get the rounded parts, like this circles and all of that. Um, what you do is you have a thumb stack, a thumb stack, thumb tack, um, some thread, and a pencil or pen or whatever. And you take the thumb tack and you put it in the middle of where you want your circle or your semicircle or whatever you're doing. And then you tie a piece of string to it, however long, however big, your circle. And then you tie the other side of the string to the pencil. Um, so in a way it works as a compass, like a giant compass, compass as in the geometry sort of compass. But anyway, so you just take it and then you bloop, make a round thing. It's pretty fun. It requires a little bit of finesse because you want to make sure you're holding your pencil at the same angle the whole way and have the yarn the same length of the pencil. You kind of just have to get a feel for it. It's not hard once you do it a few times. Um, as far as the up and down lines, that's really easy. Oh, there's my string. Okay, I'll get it. Um, you just have a level and a yardstick, and you make sure it's plumb. So, with us, our house, the walls are kind of crooked, so it's important to do this so that you don't draw a crooked on your crooked wall or you kind of make it look good. So, anyway, I have to do a little bit of modification just for that reason, but. Either way, most of y'all's walls won't be crooked like this. But yeah, you just hold it up, make it plumb. Then if you're gonna do horizontal lines, you want it like this and make it level. And then you drop. Easy peasy. Um, so yeah, and y'all are gonna notice, I don't use painter's tape. And I just, over the years, I paint so much, I feel like it's more trouble than what it's worth, especially since we have such crappy drywall. Um, it usually just makes runs and like bleeds and I've tried every type of painter's tape there is. They all suck, especially on this. I do use it occasionally on my canvas works just for like establishing borders and making lines, but in terms of painting on actual walls, I don't use painter's tape. The easiest way to get a clean line on a wall is just with a really good brush. Um, so usually the more expensive the brush, the better. But either way, um, we will finish painting.
Never can anyone accuse me of having no murals. Oh, I think they meant morals. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a lot more interesting than the mosaic mural. Not that I have anything against mosaic murals, but for me personally, I just need something a little bit more unique. And I think we accomplished that. So, uh, yeah, here it is. I'll keep it simple. Thank you guys for watching. Be right and do right.